All right, so everybody's heard of spray foam before. Have you heard of injection style foam? So different from a spray foam, a spray foam gets sprayed onto something similar to a paint gun. An injection style foam, what these guys are doing is taking a wall that's fully finished where you have drywall on one side and sheathing and siding on the other side, drilling a small hole and they're injecting foam into those wall cavities. Does it work? That's what we're here to find out today. So truth be told, we're a spray foam contractor. I've got crew guys out there running every day and they're spraying foams to interiors of houses, slopes, walls, crawl spaces, whatever the house needs. We did try one of these jobs with the injection style foam probably 10, 12, 14 years ago or so. Uh, we went out and bought the correct hoses, bought the correct foam, and we just didn't feel that the job was done to our satisfaction. So we never really went back to that style of injection. So if you're 100% convinced that you wanna do injection style foam in your walls, definitely have your contractor shoot the walls with a thermal camera when he's done. So you wanna do this on somewhat of a cold day outside, warm day inside, or vice versa. You know, you wanna see a temperature difference in those wall cavities if they did miss a spot. Because how do they tell if there was a fire block halfway up when they're sending the hose up there two or three feet, fire block could be five feet up in the air before he knows. Uh, so when he hits it with a thermal camera, you're going to see voids, you're going to see gaps, any missed areas that he may have hit, obviously have him recheck those areas, drill up a little bit higher on that wall cavity and make sure that they hit those areas for you. I'm not really going to get into the differences between the two pound closed cell and the injection style foam, but they are two different products. Uh, the injection style foam, they actually add like a water to the resin mix, so it makes it foam up more. The downfall to it that we found for one was the application process. When we had guys out there and we would drill a hole down low and another one up high and try to fill that thing, there was no true way to tell that we had a full wall cavity from head to toe. Uh, when you get like fiberglass in the mix there, there's no way to tell if it crushed the fiberglass down correctly. When we got through that job, I went through with a thermal imaging camera like we always do to check it and there was multiple missed spots. So what we did is we sent our crew guys back day after day to make sure that we hit every, every spot in that house. But even after the headaches that that involved, we still didn't feel confident in the product itself. It was just one of those things where is this thing gonna last the test of time? Uh, if you go on Facebook and you put in the search bar, victims of insulation, you're gonna find that there's companies out there that they've got dedicated pages to the downfall of the injection foam. And I'm not really here to badmouth any one company in particular, but there are a couple of companies out there that do it and they may do it great. I, I really can't tell you. I can just tell you why we don't do it. So I'm not quite sure what the manufacturer is putting in there exactly into the injection style foam, other than maybe like a foaming agent and then a water mixture. But if you look into it a little bit, that style of foam over the course of time breaks down inside the walls a lot of times. So we've found contractors that have pulled drywall five years down the road and found the foam to be crackling. Uh, what that means is really most likely that foam shrank a little bit. The, the shrinkage ultimately ends in cracking. And then once that separates and cracks apart, what ends up is you end up with certain air gaps inside there. Those air gaps, you've got a warm air on the one side of the wall and a cold air on the other side of the wall. Those gaps inside that wall could collect the moisture and create a problem down the road for you. So really, if you're hiring a contractor and you've decided you're full force, you wanna do injection style foam, there's really gonna be a few questions you wanna ask the contractor. You know, you definitely ask him a lot about his install process. How are they gonna be drilling the holes? Where are they gonna be drilling them? Is it one hole, two hole, three hole? What are they doing exactly? How do they assure that that's a foam filled cavity all the way up? And also how do they assure that they're not gonna pop the drywall? Because some of that foam is pretty strong where it'll push a little more on the drywall than let's say a cellulose installer. So you may wanna just ask a few more questions than normal and do your research on the company and also do your research on what you're getting. You know, because there are multiple different styles of products out there and you really want to make sure when you're injecting something into a wall that's going to be there hopefully forever you want to make sure it's the right stuff we have maybe 15 or 20 insulation companies here in buffalo new york uh, there's only one that i know of out there that's doing injection style projects we really don't recommend it we don't do it 
I know that company very well because three of his old employees now work for us spraying foam and installing cellulose insulation. I'd love to hear from you guys that either run those jobs or are on those job sites with the injection and have you kind of educate us on how you feel maybe we went wrong with our install process with that back 10, 12 years ago when we tried the injection job. Or even give me an idea of what you think went wrong with the pictures that we're showing inside this video here. You know, why is it cracking? Why is it shrinking? What's causing all the damage to the house? Also, go ahead and subscribe to our channel here. We're going to put a weekly video out there. Thanks for watching.